They say there's gonna be a big snowstorm tonight, which means if I wanna go anywhere tomorrow, I'll have to shovel out the driveway. And of course, I'll have a heart attack. And that'll lead to a big argument with my wife about adequate insurance coverage. So to avoid all that, I've hooked up a rig here, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Laid down a couple of sheets of marine plywood, and I got this rope running from the centers, up through these pulleys on the sides of the garage, down to this little ramp here. Now just imagine this was all covered with snow. Let me show you what happens. discovery this week up at the lodge. Apparently, if you're a club like we are and you associate yourself with a charity of some kind, you get all kinds of treats from the government. I mean, they will give us tax refunds and grants, and they'll stop trying to close the lodge and stop trying to send us all up to Baffin Island. <laughs> so uh, we've been in touch with a bunch of charities so far, no luck. They're all saying they don't need the money quite that bad. <laughs> Looks like we got ourselves a charity. Great. Yeah. Which one? The uh, Red Cross, Salvation Army, Daughters of the Empire, maybe? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, 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 Ray, this is one of the lesser known charities. It's the Dandruff Foundation. The Dandruff Foundation? Well, that's kind of a letdown. Although you'd make a great poster boy, I'm thinking. <laughs> no, it's a real dedicated group, Red. Hey, have you heard their campaign slogan? No. It's all on our shoulders. <laughs> from the lodge is, uh, is a check for $500. Pardon me? Yeah, well, $500 is a minimum donation that'll qualify us as an affiliated partner. Well, we don't have that kind of money. You think they'd accept a 73K car as payment? <laughs> Maybe, if you put 500 bucks in the glove compartment. <laughs> <laughs> well, where are we gonna come up with that kind of cash, guys, huh? Well, why don't we sell peanuts or chocolates door to door like some of them other charities? You know, a lot of people will pay two bucks for a 50 cent candy bar just to get you off their property. Now you tell me what kind of candy you want because I know a guy who can get all that stuff real cheap. It isn't Mike, is it? No, no, Mike gets all his stuff free. I know he steals it from my store. <laughs> now the guy I'm talking about imports everything from China. Oh, Chinese chocolate bar. Sweet and sour Snickers. <laughs> Today's prize is this aluminum bucket from Big Bob's Bucket Boutique. <laughs> All others pale by comparison. <laughs> Big Bird, you gotta cover your ears down. Guard. No, oh, right, sorry. <laughs> okay, Mr. Green, you got uh, 30 seconds to get Ranger Gord to say this word. Lonely. Lonely. All right. <laughs> and go! Okay, Gord, uh, working by yourself up here at the fire tower makes you feel uh, omnipotent. <laughs> I would doubt that. Sometimes I feel like I'm adrift on a sea of evil with only my animal cunning and muddy physique for protection. <laughs> you just said a lot of words there, Reg. You sure it wasn't in there somewhere? No, it was not in there. Right? <laughs> okay, no, this is, uh, this is something that you feel when no one else is around. Private, yeah, okay, no, I know, no, no. Okay, when you haven't seen other people for a long time, you get... An inflatable friend. Oh, no, no. You're almost out of time, Mr. Green. Okay, okay, Mike, okay. There was a big hit song for Paul Anka, I'm Just a Something Boy. Cabin. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, Gord, what is the worst part about being up here in a fire tower all by yourself? Oh, well, sometimes I wake up in the morning with my nose filled with mosquitoes. So not to say mosquitoes, they're pretty bad. Still, they keep me from getting too lonely. Hey! Hi, 
Winston Rothschild here of Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. If roses are orange and violets are black, <laughs> sounds like your septics are way out of whack. Today on Talking Animals, local animal control officer Ed Fred is going to teach us all about leeches. <laughs> come on, come on up here, Ed. <laughs> it's safe, they're in a bucket. Eh? Come on, although I can understand your hesitancy. I mean, these things are ugly, black, disgusting worms, and they stick on you and suck your blood, right? Yeah, that's part of it, yeah. <laughs> Plus, they have 32 brains. No, no, I'm not kidding. Every leech has 32 little brains. <laughs> Sounds like a lodge meeting. <laughs> so what do you say, folks? Do you want to see a leech or not? If you go on the internet, you can see lots of pictures of leeches there. <laughs> or visit your local bait shop. Come on, Ed, you brought in a whole bucket. Just get out one leech, that's all I'm asking, eh? Come on. All right, <laughs> all right, okay. Oh, I'm gonna try and get one out oh, here. Oh, 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 just gonna... oh, yeah. oh, oh, nope, didn't get one, sorry. Yeah, they're quick. They're very quick, yeah. Oh, I think there's one on your arm there. Huh? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, and it's getting bigger. Oh, my. I think it's tapped into an artery there. Oh. Uh, at this point, you have a couple of choices. Oh. You can put salt on the leech. Red, would you happen to have any salt in? Um, yeah, yeah, I got salt. Please? Right here. Here's some salt. Here's some oh, salt. Here's some yeah. salt. What? What? Oh, boy. You know what? I think you're just making him thirsty. Oh, yeah. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, oh, geez, I'm losing a lot of blood here. Okay, okay, um, okay. Can, can, can I have a cigarette? Uh, no, but I can get you a blindfold. No. no. Burning them with a lit cigarette is an effective way of getting rid of leeches. Oh, I, I, I don't smoke. Maybe we should rush you to a bingo hall. You know, everybody enjoys fireworks on a summer's night. They can be expensive, and some stores won't sell them to you on a buy now, pay later deal. Or maybe they've been warned about you by the local authorities. So this time on Handyman Corner, I'm gonna show you how you can make your own fireworks display using an old radio and a bunch of screen doors. <laughs> this is a tube radio. I'm sure you young people don't know what that is. But in my day, we had to turn these babies on, let them warm up before they'd work. That's how people of my generation learn to be patient. The kids of today, they expect everything to just turn on immediately. That can be a real problem during a honeymoon, I'll tell you. <laughs> We're gonna take the radio apart because all we need is the transformer, which is this heavy thing that's used to step up the voltage. It does that by induction. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I've heard of people being inducted. I'm sure it's very similar. <laughs> Another thing you gotta watch for is the capacitors. A capacitor can hold a charge of several thousand volts long after the unit is unplugged. Now, is that a capacitor or is that just a resistor? <laughs> I think I've just been inducted. <laughs> okay, I got my transformer out of there and I've attached the output to my wall of screen doors, got a wire on each side. I figure I got about 100,000 volts running through these babies. <laughs> I threw away the welcome mats that came with them. Didn't want to send out a false message. <laughs> now all I gotta do is get myself comfortable somewhere where I'll have a good view. This ought to be perfect right over here. Yeah. There we go. Now all I have to do is plug in my transformer and wait for the fireworks to start. <laughs> oh, I know. Forgot to turn on my lantern. You need that to attract the bugs. <laughs> that one smelled like a bat. You know, I know there are a lot of factors that go into making up a human being, but the main one has to be chemistry. And for a man, the main chemical ingredient has got to be testosterone. <laughs> and when you take an average man and you greatly reduce the testosterone in there, and you'll either get an ugly woman <laughs> or a guy who walks funny and works in a harem. <laughs> now, 
I know there are other chemicals involved. You got a tablespoon of bile, you got a six pack of barley, you got a cubic yard of BS and a tank full of gas. But the main one is testosterone. So we gotta be real concerned when we see negative messages about testosterone. For example, animals being neutered. Okay, I understand the rationale of taking a pig and lopping off his private parts to fatten him up. You know, the concept being he'll eat more when he has nothing better to think about. But now, getting your dog fixed to make him more manageable, that's a dangerous precedent. I'm thinking the odd time you've probably chased a car, maybe barked at a neighbor, might even have left a little mess on the floor sometimes. The last thing you want is for your wife to look at you and then glance over at the friendly, manageable family dog and start getting crazy ideas, huh? <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Hi, I'm Winston Rothschild from Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. If you're blushing from all the flushing, I'll come rushing to stop the gushing. <laughs> Dandruff Foundation, kind of interesting. Started by two guys who had similar problems and put their heads together. <laughs> Probably a couple of flakes. Rip, got the Chinese candies for us to sell. Oh, Boy, yeah. we got a deal on them too. <laughs> what, what kind of candy is it, Dalton? Um, you know, it's, I think it's a type of licorice. They have real unusual ingredients over there, so, so this is a little different licorice than, you know, we're, we're used to around here. Yeah, the, the color looks okay. How's it taste? Oh, oh, I'm uh, good, fine. Yeah, they, uh, you don't look bad. You know, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of worse stuff, although uh, I don't work at the uh, input side of things. Well, uh, guys, you know, if we're gonna sell these to the public, we better taste them first. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense, yeah. sure. Yeah, we, we, uh, we could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who wants to start first? Nobody. Well, the, the, we have to do it together. That's all there is to it. Fair yeah. is fair. Okay, yeah. sure, fine. sort of an unusual flavor. Oh. What is that? It's a Chinese taste. It's either soy sauce or firecrackers. How much do you think we should charge people for a box of these things? Oh, we gotta get two bucks a box, as long as we don't let them taste them first. I think we better go five bucks, because we don't have very many potential customers, and there's gonna be no repeat business. You figured you asked all the right questions. Can I help you with anything? Is there anything you need? Are you sure? Are you sure you're sure? Then you made the biggest mistake of your life. You took her at her word. See, she figures it's obvious she needs some help. You figured you ask, she says no, you're off the hook, right? Now the thermostat just went down 25 degrees. No, I'm fine didn't mean no, I'm fine. That's because she said it like, no, I'm not fine. See, she expects you to listen to the way she says the words, not just the words. Yeah, you figured just listening was a big step forward, never mind interpreting. And let's face it, you're not getting any more sensitive. So here's a rule of thumb. If she locks herself alone in the bathroom weeping, that means she said the exact opposite of what she meant. So your excuse has to be that you meant the exact opposite of what you said. See, men and women have been sending each other that kind of misinformation since the dawn of time. It's called communicating. Don't thank us. That's what friends are for. Had a bit of a tennis match 
out by the lodge there, and just a two against two, it's a three-point game. A lot of sportsmanship involved, and Dalton's going to be the going to be the umpire there. So Frank's ready, and here comes the first serve. Walter can really fire that baby. Jimmer, and then right through and off the back, and it's in, it's in, it's in. That's a good, that's a point, that's a point. Yeah, it's a point, point. We got that little argument there. Won't do you any good. No, he saw it. He saw it was in. Won't, won't help you. Won't help you, Mike. Don't do that. There you go. <laughs> All right. Serve again. Now watch this. He can. Walter can really put a spin on a ball. Watch the spin on this baby. Guys, look at. They think the. They think the big one's coming. That's right. Get back. Get back. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Oh, too far. Too far. Too far. Too far. There you go. All right. <laughs> put some spin on her, Walter. Put some spin on her. Give her a good slice. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Just dive. Just dive. Look at that. <laughs> That's another point. That's two. One more point to go. We got ourselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was good. It was good. It was good. Oh, no. No, it won't be any good, Winston. It won't be any good. No. Leave the ump alone. Oh, that's got to hurt. That's got to hurt. No, I don't think Winston did it somehow. All right. Point three. This is game, set, match, and a high one. Oh, it's a high one. Not yet. No, wait a minute. Wait. Not yet. Not, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. There we go. Got her. Got her. And... That's out, that's out, that's a game, that's a game. We got her. Way to go, way to go, Walter. We nailed her. <laughs> and great umping there, Dalton. Well, uh, Mike and Winston are kind of sore losers, which is unfortunate. Mm. <laughs> and personal, we're going to meet explosives enthusiast Edgar Montrose, get a chance to look at the man behind the powder burns. Uh, <laughs> Edgar, maybe you could take us back to the beginning when you were growing up as a kid. Oh, yeah, well, Red, my father was an accountant and my mom was a librarian. It was a very quiet house. <laughs> up until my seventh birthday. That's when I got the chemistry set. Uh, so, so was it a large house, Edgar? Well, it got a little smaller that day. So you started experimenting with explosives at a very early age. I would say so. I kind of lost track of time there. Uh, I'd blow something up that it might take a while before I regain consciousness. But I got right back at it. I was curious to know where things go when they explode. And where do they go? A long way. Once I filled my bicycle handlebars with dynamite, when I set that off, it blew my horn halfway to Port Asbestos. You know, you can, you can get hurt having that kind of fun, Edgar. Oh, I didn't do it for fun, Red. It was educational. <laughs> uh, I learned a lot. For example, I learned that an explosive is very strong. Stronger than, say, uh, a finger. Oh. <laughs> Uh, that, that, that must have been painful. Oh, yeah. They said they might have been able to reattach the finger after the explosion, but it took too long to come down. You know, personally, I would never mess around with dynamite. That's because you have no idea what you're doing, Red. <laughs> I'm an artist. When somebody wants their house moved, I can lift that unit right off the foundation, stand it up on one corner while the plumbing drains, and then lay it sideways on a flatbed truck. And I'll tell you, you haven't seen beauty until you've seen a 60-foot maple tree bouncing end over end through a Canadian sunset. All right, all right, Edgar, just a second. We don't, we don't want to be sending out the wrong message here, so... To wrap it up, why don't you look right into the camera and give a little bit of advice to any of the youngsters that are watching this. All right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that was a little insincere, I think, don't you? Okay. <clears throat> don't fool around with any type of explosives. You need lots of training to work with explosives. And you need a special permit that you can only get by passing a rigorous government test. And yeah, why don't you show them what that permit looks like? <laughs> Well, liquor sales have not been brisk. I haven't sold any. I don't think Winston sold any. Dalton sold 10 boxes to Moose Thompson, but hey, with Moose, if you put enough hot sauce on it, he'd eat a garden shed. You know, I 
kind of like this licorice. I must be getting used to it. Well, you're married to Anne Marie. I think you could get used to anything, though. <laughs> hey, you guys. Yeah. I think I figured out why we're having so much trouble selling this licorice. Because it's expensive and tastes like asphalt? No, oh, no. I was trying to sell this stuff door to door, and there was this Chinese exchange student staying at Buster Hatfield's place. Oh, yeah. He took one look at this box and he said, Those letters don't say licorice. Well, what do they say? Earrings. <laughs> Red, we're in a lot of trouble here. We could be charged. Well, how could we be charged? As accessories. I don't feel so good. You know your trouble? <laughs> you don't look good with earrings. <laughs> what do we do now? We do nothing. We keep our mouths shut. We can't go back to the same customers and sell them these candies as jewelry now. Well, how are we going to get that $500 to the, the Dandruff Foundation? We're not going to get it to them. They got dandruff, they can find their own scratch. <laughs> well, meantime, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, this is so great, isn't it? <laughs> Boy, if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I'm bringing you a great gift. 50 boxes of earrings, all lefts. <laughs> and I know the guys who left them. <laughs> And to the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm, I'm a man, man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. <laughs> okay, man, the uh, Dandruff Foundation has a little research project going, so if any of you have dandruff, they'd uh, like you to give them your head after you pass on. <laughs> or uh, you could send it over now if you're not using it. <laughs>